many countries. Now, come to the last speaker from Philippines, Dr. Enerio. And today, he will show us a good topic, which is about mentoring school principles to professional standards in the Philippines. So please welcome, Dr. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to request the program management team, Kim Sen, to play my pre-recorded video so that I can have my time management, which is only 15 minutes given to me. Yes, Since sir. I am the last speaker, I, I think I'd rather have my pre-recorded video. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. I am Inerio E. Ibiza, Principal for of Tambo Central School from the Department of Education, Division of Legal City. I am happy that I am part of the Cambodia's first international conference on mentoring educators for SECME 2020. My topic is mentoring school principals towards professional standards in the Philippines. I'd like to tell you that I come from the Division of Elegant City, from the city of Majestic Waterfalls. Now let's have my mentoring background. I am a National Certified Learning Facilitator of the National Educators Academy of the Philippines. This organization is in charge of learning and development to all teachers and school leaders. I am also the president of the Philippine Elementary School Principals Association, Legal City Chapter, where all the principals in my division is under my care. I am also a part of the technical working group of the Philippine Professional Standards for School Heads, where this presentation is anchored with. I am also a reviewer of the Philippine Professional Standards for Supervisors. <laughs> now this is the Philippine Professional Standards for School Heads, or PPSSH. The Department of Education has issued Deputy Order Number 24, Series of 2020, last September 7, 2020, titled National Adoption and Implementation of the Philippine Professional Standards for School Heads. In the Philippines, this is our legal mandate ordering all the principals in the country to adopt and implement after the said issuances. Now, what is PPSSH? It is a set of standards for school heads that articulates the professional practice expected of a quality school head. We are ensuring in the, in the Republic of the Philippines that all school heads are of quality. It serves as a public statement of professional accountability of school heads. Meaning to say, all of us in the Philippines must know what are expected from school heads. It sets out what school heads are expected to know, be able to know, and value as they progress in their profession. So, school heads or school principals in the Philippines have now one document that would tell them what to do, what they need to know, and what they should value as they progress their career. It also provides for a common language for high impact leadership expected of school heads. Meaning to say, we have now the same definition as to what is really a high impact school leadership. It guides individual professional reflections as well as professional discussions among educational leaders and other stakeholders. This is where mentoring to school heads would come in. And of course, this would inform the provision of professional learning and development for school heads. In a division of Milligan City, we are composed of more than 100 school heads. And with this number, we are also into developing our own leadership practices by way of communicating with one another through mentoring. This is the framework of our new standards. 
It shows a broad conceptual sphere of leadership practices in five domains. These domains depict the synergy between maximizing school effectiveness with two domains, leading strategically and managing school operations and resources through a broad sphere of instructional and administrative practices in which we have also risk people effectiveness with three dimensions or domains. We have focusing on teaching and learning, developing self and others, and building connections. It shows learners at the center of the framework to emphasize the important role of school heads for the improvement of learner achievement. Because all of our aspirations as school principals are always boiled down to the level of developing our learners holistically. Now, these are the mentoring milestones I have with the Division of Elegant City in particular. We had conducted a series of orientations, especially to Deputy Order number 24 and 25, since we have already our new standards. We had also conducted focus group discussions with the lead persons or the key persons like the presidents of the local organizations. We had also conducted learning action cells in which we group ourselves into smaller groups and then we discuss things that would help us improve our professional practice in terms of school leadership and supervision. I have also evaluated the portfolio of our school leaders in the Division of Elegant City because their portfolio would mean about their understanding on the concept of the new standards. Along with their portfolios are the reflections in which they answered questions pertaining to their understanding and of course their commitment to realizing the development of the standards in the city, particularly to their schools where they are assigned into. And lastly, we have also conducted alignment of our key resource areas vis a -vis domains of standards because we wanted to ensure that the key resource areas of the school heads are matched with the five domains articulated in the Philippine professional standards for school heads, meaning to say their monthly accomplishment, all the things that they're doing in school should be aligned with these two keywords, the KRAs and the five domains. I'd like to show with you the, the consultations that we took in with the stakeholders starting 2018 up to 2019. So we traveled from different regions in the country just to get the voices of our stakeholders. Our stakeholders included our students, our parents, teachers, and of course, select school heads and supervisors. We wanted to get their voices so that this Philippine professional standards for school heads would be all about the work of the school heads. And it should be tailored fit to their needs. And of course, to all the things they're doing in school. We have conducted our first validation of the standards across the regions last February 2019. We were selecting the seven best regions or the basic education sector transformation regions in which region 10 where the Division of Ligan City belongs to. So we have here seven regions that were included during the first validation. We had also our points to consider about mentoring. It is a common fact that not all school leaders would want to be mentored because for them, they think they are too busy with their work. And others also would not invite or would not like to have change. That's why they would say no thanks, even if the if these things like mentoring would lighten 
their work as school leaders. Now, those are the things that I have found out during mentoring. By starting a process, it implies some change. There, 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 is, there are changes that would really occur. That's why our mentees could not want to be mentored. All change can be threatening, that's a fact. And there's a need for change or that implies things are not working as well as they could. And then the need for care and sensitivity in the way the change process is addressed. Because not all school leaders have the same needs. And there needs to be an appropriate climate to bring about change. So these are the things that I have found out during the mentoring process as I have mentored the school leaders in the division of Indian Sea. At least I have already um, enumerated all this and then I have, also, I have also validated this during the process. Now, what made all those points to consider come into reality? Okay, so this is a possible issue. In working with school principals, part of my focus has been to involve others. Some are senior to me and some are not. So when age is a requirement or when age would take place, then you will encounter three types of mentees. First one are the rational adapter who are very willing to listen to data and evidence. Okay, so we would want school leaders to be rational adapter so that they can absorb information better. But along the way, there are also group of school heads who are pragmatic skeptic. They are open to change under certain circumstances. So they are not really 100% sure or they're not really 100% okay with the things that you have mentored with them. So they are, they are choosy, they are selective. It depends on the situation or the circumstance that they have faced with. And lastly, are the Stone Age obstructionists. These are the mentees who are very difficult to move on anything new, especially in the standards for school principals. For your information, before PPSSH came, we have this NCBSSH. Since there are a lot of changes that we have uh, encountered, that's why we come up with the new standards. And these Stone Age obstructionists are still, okay, are still wanting to embrace the old standards, considering that we have already our new standards. So these are the three types of school principals. Okay, during my mentorship, the rational adapter, the pragmatic skeptic, and the stone age obstructionist. Before I end, I'd like to share with you this code, which is very essential for mentoring. To be a champion, you have to learn to handle stress and pressure. But if you're prepared mentally and physically, you don't have to worry. So these are some of the elements that we need as mentors, because whether we like it or not, we are not everyone's cup of tea and we cannot really please everybody. So we need to prepare ourselves mentally and physically so that we can realize our objectives as mentors. Another thing is, I'd like you to have this from Sarah Gabron. Surround yourself with people who support you and find champions. Because in mentoring, it doesn't only mean that it is only you who will mentor. You need also other people who can mentor you and who can support you in the mentoring. Like in the school, in my school, I have more than 120 teachers. In my organization, being the best pop president, I have more than 100 school principals, both from elementary and secondary. And I cannot do mentoring all by myself. I need to surround myself with people who can support me financially, physically, emotionally, 
socially and all aspects that you need so that you will, it, can, it, will, it will become it will make you a better person so let us find these people who we consider champions thank you so much cambodia first international conference on mentoring educators for inviting me Okay, thank you so much, Doctor, for your wonderful presentation for our conference today. And uh, I think it's time for question and answer, and we have got some questions from our, our audience. So let's move to the first question. From Sat, uh, the question is, what are the role of the school principal to work with the mentor? Please explain, thank you. Thank you for that question. Uh... The role of the principals for uh, for their mentor would be they would supply data in terms of success stories and challenges they met while implementing the standards, and it would also improve their leadership practice uh, being um, shared in the school level. Uh, they are also with their colleagues as they are going to share with uh, experiences and then try to improve how they can run the school smoothly, especially in this uh, in this time of pandemic. And we are very much particular also in the development of the 21st century skills among our principals, because uh, in the Philippines, we are also into collaboration. We are, also, we are also into communication. We need to empower them so that there is also improvement in terms of critical thinking and creativity as they uh, manage the school uh, resources and all the domains expected for school heads to define as articulated in different order number 24, series of 2020. Okay. Thank you, Doctor. Now we got two more questions from Mr. Roneta. So let me focus on the first question first. So the, the first one is to what specific criteria or platforms need to be used to figure out the professional standard in school mentoring. Thank you. As I have enumerated earlier, we have five domains um, embedded in the new standards. We have leading strategically. We have also managing school resources and operations. We have um, what you call this one, uh, focusing teaching and learning. We have also developing self and others, and we have building connections. So this five would become, uh, would serve as criteria in ensuring that school heads in the Philippines are doing their functions. Okay, thank you. So one more question, the second one is, to what kind of degree or scale in consider as professional standard in school mentoring? Could you please, could you please provide your justification? Thank you. What kind of degree or scale is considered as professional standard in school mentoring? Uh, to give you a clear, clear picture about a school management in the Philippines, we are grouped into district or cluster of school. So we are not only running a particular school, but we need other school heads to compose a particular district. And we are also realizing our plans, our objectives, uh, in a district level, okay, because we are also uh, being supervised by a district supervisor, not only a district supervisor, we're also being supervised by uh, supervised supervision who are also giving us technical assistance and support. So this would somehow um, serve as rock support to school heads in the Philippines. Okay, so the next question is to avoid mistakes in mentoring tasks, could you, could you advise some techniques for providing constructive feedback for our colleagues? Thank you. Uh, I, I, I like this question. Uh, for mentoring, it should be more on constructive uh, feedback because uh, if you deal with uh, fellow school heads, like in the Philippines, uh, there are school heads, especially those identified in my previous slides, school heads who are um, obstructionists, school heads who are rational adapter, school heads who are also uh, 
choosy in terms of um, absorbing information. So as a mentor, it's nice to uh, men uh, mentor uh, our colleagues using uh, constructive feedback so that in a way they are also they would also appreciate your mentoring as skills like what's the purpose of mentoring and then you're also building relationship with them and you know what the essence of mentoring is long term and it should be building a relationship with one another so there must be constructive uh, feedback and not to destroy and not to uh, not to break a uh, relationship with one another. So it's more on um, healthy uh, mentoring by giving your honest um, observation, of course, uh, within the context of your um, mentoring, um, uh, what you call this one, mentoring process. Okay, thank you. Now the next question is from Melvin Miranda, aside from CRAS or KRAS. What are the specific performance indicators to measure success of mentoring among school principals? Thank you. Aside from the key result areas, um, what are the specific performance indicators to measure success of mentoring among school principals? We have also this so-called learning action cell that we are engaged with in our respective district. And this learning action cell uh, is also monthly and we are being supervised by our supervisors. Like uh, aside from ensuring that there is alignment of our uh, activities, projects and plans with our KRA, we are also uh, being, uh, being uh, provided with uh, particular domains, uh, as what I have mentioned, the five domains in our standards uh, in uh, the PPSSH. So this would be back to back with the KRA and our our uh, domains uh, expected from us to accomplish each year. And then in each in 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 every year also we are being uh, rated, we are being evaluated in terms of our office performance. Um, Office, office performance commitment review form in which we are being rated on the five domains expected from us school heads. This will be the KRA of the school heads. Okay, thank you, sir. And also, he also dropped the next question. Do you think leadership styles can be considered as a key factor in effective mentoring of school heads? Thank you. Yes, of course. Um, mentoring also uh, involves leadership styles of the mentor. If the mentor is more on um, uh, considering relationship with one another, and then he is also considering uh, uh, what you call this one um, outcome or output of the men of the mentoring process. Then I think the leadership style of that school head would would, would, would matter uh, in the in the mentoring process. Like in my case, in my case, if I if I, if I am the president of the Philippine Elementary School Principals Association here in Iligan City, and then my leadership style is more on creating uh, uh, information, okay, from my colleagues, more on. Uh, knowing who my colleagues are before mentoring happens. So it's more on as was more on getting the profile of my colleagues before I can uh, put into my uh, my constructive feedbacks, especially in the implementation of the new standards we have in the Philippines. So it's more on knowing who my my mentors or mentees are, and then where I can serve my purpose as their mentor. Thank you so much, Doctor. Next is from Mr. Kumhian. Depending on your own perspective and experiences, why most of people reject to change? Um, this is a common fact that not, not all school heads would like to be mentored because they are already engrossed with their own, like they are already 
uh, into their uh, comfort zone and they don't like to be mentored by, especially by new fights, by new school leaders, and they are resistant, uh, res they don't like a change to occur in their school. That's why they are still in growth with the old standards. In the Philippines, we have these competency-based standards for school heads that serve for centuries or for decades in the Philippines. And these uh, Jurassic school heads are still in the old standards and they do not like the new standards to be implemented in their school. That's why they don't, they don't like to be mentored, okay? especially in this time of uh, new changes, new standards for the Philippine professional standards for school heads. So they, they, would, they would tend to reject a uh, new concept okay, because they are still enjoying the old concept they had uh, in the past. Okay, thank you. And doctor, my own question, <laughs> I would like to ask you that based on your uh, experience, uh, what challenges have you faced being a school principal? Thank you. In terms of challenges, I have plenty of challenges that I have encountered in my previous school and in my present school. One of those challenges that I've encountered would be about legality in terms of school matter. Like you are being a question about uh, the, 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 what they call the school um, ownership and then private uh, entities would claim about their ownership of the school and then you are not also being provided with clear um, legalities about the school since you are new in this school. Uh, I have also challenged with the different personalities of the stakeholders because there are stakeholders who are also um, who are also uh, who would want their pers personal biases okay to come in like they are very particular with their personal needs and then they do not consider uh, the general welfare of the school and then lastly would be about uh, stakeholders engagement especially in this time of pandemic there is um, there is uh, limit, limited mobility in terms of uh, connections. Like we have plenty of stakeholders, but since we have also limitations in the Philippines, that's why we cannot really generate and we cannot get the a majority of our stakeholders. So those are some of the challenges I have encountered uh, being a school leader in the Philippines. Thank you so much, Doctor, uh, because of time. And we would like to say thank you so much for spending time with us and share a really good topic. And also, Welcome. Okay. Answer to all participants' questions. And we also would love to say thank you. I really appreciate for the audience that you really participate in our conference for seeing the morning and to the last, it is evening.